Mobile games. Did I scare you? The bastard child of the gaming world, the absolute dumpster of gaming. If a bad game exists, it's most likely going to be a mobile game. But let's face it, mobile games in the past five years have gotten worse. And more importantly, they've gotten weirder. I mean, this whole trend of advertising fake games is one of the strangest things I've ever seen. And all of this has got me thinking, what happened to mobile games? Why have they gotten so much worse? I can't think of a single mobile game these days that has the same staying power of Clash of Clans or Clash Royale or anything super self, I'm being honest. Nowadays, we have shit like Mafia City pregnant dog simulator, twerk race? I thought it'd be a fun idea to play through some of the old classics, some boner jams, but if I saw an ad for a new game, I had to play it no matter what. This was going to take me down a chaotic path, a dark rabbit hole, playing some of the most cursed scam games on the market. But before we get started, let's take a quick look at the history of mobile gaming. Mobile gaming was invented by John Mobile, born in the era of Nokia in 1342. His first invention included the classic game Snake, which long ago was played with real snakes and apples in a pit. This game became a built-in feature on all Nokias, which ceased to exist after the War of Phones in the late 1580s between Apple, led by Sir Stephen Jobs, and the Nokia faction resulting in 32,000 casualties over the course of a year. From there, the new renaissance of mobile gaming began, built on the back of a new platform known as the App Store, resulting in the emergence of a new pastime that gripped kids and 40-year-old moms alike, Candy Crush the addictive game of matching candies and other various treats. However, another challenger quickly appeared. The MMORPG genre infiltrated the mobile scene with the legendary Clash of Clans, a game that needs no introduction, pioneering what it meant to be a mobile game. No longer were the days of mobile games being single player. Now you could join clans with your friends, participate in raids, build an empire, and most importantly, bully people with a lower town hall level. But a massively overlooked element behind the success of mobile games is that this was the origin of the free-to-play model of gaming. At this time during the 2010s, free games were generally just an unheard heard of concept, but simply removing the barrier to entry resulted in millions of players who otherwise would have simply looked the other way. And also a very important factor is that kids don't have money. If you want kids to play something, you almost have to make it free. The final landmark in our history lesson released in 2016 with the absolutely insane boom of Pokemon Go, or as I call it, Turf War for Kids and 30 Year Old Losers. I like to imagine the Nintendo meeting for this game went something like this. How can we compete with mobile game companies? Release a free Pokemon game. Ooh, I like that idea unpaid in turn one. I like like it, but it's missing something. What if we added gang violence to it? Yeah, Pokemon Go. Probably one of the most entertaining times to be around. Remember when people were apparently dying from this game? Just kind of sounds like natural selection if you ask me. And that effectively brings us up to the modern day of mobile gaming. I call this the advertising era. Back in 2015, the only real method of successfully attaining a viral mobile game was just to make a game that was so good that it spread through word of mouth. Some even managing to get on the news. Nowadays, we just pay for hundreds of ads on everything so people can't escape from it. And some games with a high enough budget even go as far to pay some people like me to promote their products. This video is sponsored by Rain Shadow. No, I'm just kidding. I never sell you guys out like that. Definitely not like I reached out to several companies for an ad deal and got ghosted by all of them. Uh, you know, you're lost, guys. But then further into this modern era, I think starting around 2022 and 2023, we started a new trend of mobile gaming. Blatant scams. But enough talking, let's play some classic mobile games. But which one to choose? You know what, instead of choosing between mobile games, let's look at one of the most prominent mini genres of mobile games. That's right, Endless Runners. Runners are our classics. Temple Run, Subway Surfers, Jetpack Joyride, Minion Run... You know the formula, games where you run infinitely and dodge obstacles. Sometimes there's a spooky monster, sometimes there isn't. If you've ever seen a YouTube short, you've seen one of these. Endless runners accomplish everything a mobile game needs to. Infinite replayability, competitive incentives to beat your friend's high score, and most importantly, it's intuitiveness. No one needs a tutorial on this game, you just kind of run and figure the rest out as you go. Temple Run specifically kind of holds a special place in my heart. In fact, I can even vividly remember playing this on my Kindle during church whenever I'd sneak it in. Take that, Pastor Bill. Out of all the runners though, I think Temple Run 2 might actually be the most boring one though. Honestly, I think this is the case of a game that tried to innovate for the sake of innovation. Temple Run tries to implement this pseudo motion control system instead of switching between lanes like Subway Surfers, and that you just tilt your device either direction, and when I was seven, yeah, this fucking blew my mind. Today, not so much. And something that I definitely see today is that this game is ugly, and not in like a charming PS1 ugly, in a, oh god, did this always look this bad? Kind of like your grandparents' house, you know? And your grandparents themselves, to be honest. But yeah, hot take, I think Temple Run is the worst of the runners in general. I don't find the water or minecart gimmicks to be that crazy, the tilt controls are just kind of a pain in the ass, and once again the visuals are just terrible. Unlike Jetpack Joyride. This was my shit as a kid. The art style slaps. The theme slaps. The vehicles slap. This game just goes hard. In my opinion, this was the peak game of the runner genre. At 
least I used to say that. Coming back to this game, I was extremely excited to play through an old classic. I thought this would be a slam dunk for this video, only to find that it had changed and not really for the better. This game has a lot more ads than I remember, and not just like a few more ads, ads for rewards, ads on the game over screen, ads everywhere. And look, I know you gotta get paid, right? You gotta make your bag, especially making a game in a free-to-play genre. But taking a game that was previously hardly monetized and making it super monetized feels kinda wrong. But I mean, who cares? It's half brick, right? They made Fruit Ninja and that shit's in like Dave and Buster's. This shit was so profitable that it turned into a case study. It's a great game overall, but I'm just not willing to pay to get rid of ads, especially for something that I used to get for free. But let's move on to Subway Surfers. This is the gold standard for endless runners these days. Simple cartoon art style, three lane setup, cool power-ups that everyone understands. But as much as I like this version of the game, have you ever heard of the VR version? This is Subway Sprinters, the unlicensed VR clone. But you might be wondering, how the hell does that even work? The simple answer? It doesn't. To start the running, you need to break the window on the train with a pickaxe, causing the cop to chase you. But I later realized, um, there's... No one there. It's a little lame. You can use the joystick to switch lanes, but the rest of the game operates on motion controls. To duck under the roadblocks, you literally need to duck. And to jump over stuff, you have to simulate jumping by swinging your hands upwards. But this game isn't free. This was a $6 game that's free on everyone's phone in the world. Please don't buy this. But here's what I'm wondering. How many people actually play Subway Surfers today? And how many people just see this at the bottom of TikToks? The endless runner boogeyman, the villain of YouTube shorts, the viewer retention demon. Somehow 10 years after this game released, it came back to ruin in everyone's attention span. How many videos out there exist of just a random fucking show or movie with this at the bottom? It's either that or like a GTA clip of a ramp. Kind of reminds me of the time I tried to start a podcast. Welcome everyone to the White Trash Podcast. This is the only podcast, and that's not a lie. I'm joined today by my co-host, Isaiah Whiteman. Not what not topics right. do we have on the discussion board today? Most efficient way to steal from Walmarts. Oh, this is easy. I've stolen from Walmart. Many times. Well, okay. For legal reasons, no. It's not illegal if it's from Walmart. That's true. Um, big corporation, no, no. They I steal. think it's a moral thing to steal from them. Yeah, You're because right. it, 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 they're basically begging you to steal. I mean, one time I was walking down the, sh the aisles and I saw a stress ball and it was pulled out of this little box packaging just sitting on the shelf begging to be taken. So you know what I did? I fucking you took it. it. Yeah, I took it. Yeah. Good. And Good for you. Oh, yeah. Did you take a shopping great. cart too? You know, one time I actually did and really? threw it in the creek. You are such a piece of shit. Okay, to be fair, it was off a bridge. Does that make it better? It was really cool. Yeah. That I mean, we got, it, we got it on camera too, so I'll find the video somewhere. I fuck with that. We'll put that on screen. Insert video of me. Fuck! Insert, you ask yourself? Just a little bit. Fucking Insert video of me throwing shopping cart over bridge. Editor. It's, they're you playing it right now. You don't have to keep saying it. I'm it's sorry. really awkward now, though. It's because the, the video, video, the video exactly. wasn't very long. The video went. Yeah, yeah. Next topic! <laughs> <laughs> so how's your cigar? Bad. Bad? I think it's over moistened. I've never chain smoked in my life, but today might be the day. Today's the day. Today might be the day that I start. Because chain smoking, when you think about it, I mean, all the benefits. So many benefits. So many So benefits. many. I mean, there's no cons. <laughs> we can't not that I can see. You, you gotta think. The ancient Mayans, I mean, they chain smoked and. Is that true? Yeah. Well, they also had um, a tree that the fruit that grew on them contained. Just one? That was called a translation for like horse balls. Because oh, it literally looked like this. a fucking yeah. set of horse And it has glue inside. They had some weird ass shit down there. I can already see this turning into a fucking YouTube short. A YouTube short about some Mayan beliefs. I can hear, I can see half of your frame and then some fucking some GTA races. races. Like the guy shittily the crashing down the ramps. Yeah, yeah. fucking. <laughs> Dude, those videos. So. I can't believe we just wandered into someone's fucking garage and started doing this. Hungry Shark. Holy shit, if you want to talk about nostalgia, this is the nostalgia game. I mean, what's there even to talk about here? You're just a shark. You eat shit with said shark, you get bigger sharks to eat bigger things. Simple, right? Well, the brilliant minds at Ubisoft said no. Fuck that. Let's release multiple Hungry Shark games, call them similar things, and make it incredibly unclear which is the definitive version to play. So we have Hungry Shark Evolution, which is the current game on screen, and this is Hungry Shark World. And I honestly can't tell which game looks better. So Hungry Shark World was Ubisoft's attempt to upgrade Hungry Shark Evolution. And so Technically, this game has better graphics.
graphics, but for some reason they got rid of the really cool shader work. The world just looks infinitely less interesting to me, and much to my surprise, there are a ton of removed features from Evolution, which we'll get to in a minute. But in terms of being a game, Hungry Shark World is miles better than Evolution. There are more sharks, weirder, wackier abilities, and the game is infinitely less grindy than its predecessor. But of course, if you don't feel like grinding to get the sharks like everyone else, you could always fork over a few dogs and get whatever kind of shark you want, which no one ever let me do. No, I had to grind for days to get my hands on that great white. I was in the fucking trenches. But you know what? I'm an adult now, and I have adult money. No one can tell me no now. Yeah, I might have actually spent like $10 on this game. Not my finest purchase. You trying to tell me that my big mama isn't cool? Fucking loser. But thankfully, this game is exactly how I remember it. Massacre everything you see, kill sea life, divers, and valuable human life, all for the glory of keeping the shark alive. Find treasures, secrets, and if memory serves, there are even bosses too. In fact, I think there was a crab in the ship or something. Let's go pay it a visit. And no, oh, there's, there's nothing here. It's odd. Is this not where it was? Nope. Just checked. I was right. They decided to remove a boss battle for the sequel to the original game. Uh, this is just completely baffling to me. Yes, they replaced it with something in another location, but why remove legacy stuff and just make the location empty? It's not like this location serves any greater purpose now. This was the most memorable part of evolution for me as a kid, so getting rid of it just seems in poor taste. However, I will admit that everything else about the game is a huge improvement. You get resources faster, there are multiple maps, Shark Godzilla, it's just fun. And oh, ad break time. And ugh, one of these games, huh? Just one of the games where you drag a guy through the gates. God, there's so many of these, man. Is there a genre for these games? No? No, there isn't. Oh shit, this is a big opportunity. I dub these games gate shooters. Well, by my own rule, I have to download this. Ebony, The King's Return. Seems a bit more, I don't know, uh, medieval than the ad, but whatever. Ebony would like to access your location. Um, sure. I guess that's pretty common. Ebony would like to manage your calls. Is this game gonna take like fucking full priority over my phone or something? Okay, sure, whatever. Ebony would like to access your Wi-Fi network. You know what, sure Ebony, fucking, while you're at it, here's my fucking social security. Is there, is there anything else you want? Oh, and this is absolutely nothing like the ads. What the f- Chapter one. Games with false advertising. In the modern era, false advertising is a mere suggestion, and ads these days contain literally anything to get a click from the user. And Ebony, Return of the King has been the absolute god of this for well over a decade. This game is internet history, using clickbait since the dawn of PC gaming. There's actually a full page dedicated to their old advertising scheme, so let me give you the rundown. Even as far back as 2009, Ebony started to run some browser ads. A conventional knight in armor advertising the basics of the game. And then immediately, you see the developers got horny or something and switch it over to women, which at this point were at the very least still medieval. And then they just switched it to the most degenerate, suggestive images you can get away with, just iconically making ads like this. I mean, I guarantee you that this got some people to sign up, but do you really think that anyone started playing this game because of an ad like this? But their efforts didn't stop there. Many of you may recognize ads like these, where it's a dungeon style puzzle game. This is also an Ebony ad. Is this in the game? No, it is not. And we've all seen false ads in mobile gaming, right? But doesn't this directly contradict false advertising laws? Well, let me explain to you how these ads fully abuse a legal loophole. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is an organization in charge of maintaining legal commerce in the United States. The main legal document that controls what they can and can't act on is the FTC Act, which in Section 5 states on page fucking 1 prohibits unfair or deceptive acts or practices in or affecting commerce. Then they also define it right here at the bottom of the page. A representation, omission, or practice misleads is likely to mislead the consumer. Seems pretty cut and dry, right? But then they also specifically talk about fake ad campaigns too. Furthermore, the prohibition against unfair or deceptive ads or practices applies not only to the products or services offered by a bank, but to every stage and activity from the product development to the creation and rollout of marketing campaigns. So this just straight up seems like a law meant to stop ads like this from ever existing. So you might be asking, how the fuck are they getting away with this? Well, my naive friend, they get away with it because the US is stupid. Let me ask you a question. How do these games make money? There are usually two paths. They either run constant advertisements or they go down the free to play pay to win route with endless microtransactions. But regardless, there's no entry fee. And that alone is enough for the FTC to deem it perfectly okay. The laws I just read to you legitimately mean nothing as long as the product itself can be used completely free. So in all seriousness, they can advertise the game as whatever the fuck they want. If the game is completely free, 
3, they could promise you that the game makes your dick grow three inches, which is actually what happens if you hit the subscribe button. And we all know you could use another three. The goal is to just get you in the game and farm free money off you. So they still profit and they steer clear of any legal problems. This blatant false advertising is completely legal. They could run an ad that says, I don't know, this game will teach you how to make a pipe bomb for the assassination of a high level elected official at their home residence of 2253 West Winchester Road, Madison, Wisconsin, 53562 on August 2nd, 2025. And that'd be completely legal. Totally legal. Probably. And now Ebony has continued to evolve into the modern era, parodying the gate shooter genre of games. Ebony has allegedly been a master of completely fraudulent advertising since 2009, and that is damn impressive. If they put as much time into their game as they did their advertising, they might actually have built a player base by now. But while we're on the topic, let's look at some gate shooters that are actually advertising the real game. Starting with Last War. This is probably the second most advertised game of this little genre. However, Last War has become so meta that they're advertising about fake games in their ads. Ebony is such a problem dominant scam that Last War is legitimately trying to capitalize off it. You're gonna walk through the gate in front of you with the better option, shoot the things, rinse and repeat, nothing spe- Okay, for some reason, there's a whole Clash of Clans thing going on here too. But you know what? Maybe it's a great base builder, right? Let's entertain it. So we have a barracks for basic troops, heroes we can collect, basic resource stuff, and uh, yeah. This is the most Clash of Clans basic cookie cutter bullshit I've ever seen. But I'm guessing the main focus of this game is to just play missions, I guess? And oh no, the enemies have broken into the base and they've planted a bomb. And oh no, we only have eight hours to complete it. What are we gonna do? I was so unbelievably uninterested by this that I completely forgot about it. In fact, I'm 72 hours late, so um, this woman is just deceased, for sure. And oh, she's fine. The bomb timer was just a, a funny little joke from the enemies, just a little prank. I was kind of hoping they had an alternative ending where everything just goes to shit. This game isn't worth your time, people. In general, before we move on to something, I just want to throw it out there that these style of games actually just kind of suck. But they are tailor-made to look really fun in an ad, but they're infinitely less fun to play, so steer clear of these. But you know what these games sort of remind me of? Another game revolving around shooting things and lanes and power-ups, plants versus zombies. This is one of the best mobile games of all time. Now, technically, this is a port of a PC game, but I think today this franchise is just generally a mobile franchise. I mean, the sequel to it was a mobile exclusive after all, but conceptually, this is just kind of an abomination of a video game. I mean, think about it. Plants versus zombies? It's one of the most schizophrenic things I've ever heard. A bunch of zombies want to eat your brains, and so to defend yourself, you enlist the help of Crazy Dave, potentially the least coherent human being on the planet, and his army of sentient plants to essentially create a private militia. This is probably another Waco situation waiting to happen. The amount of ridiculous builds you can make with the combination of plants, the absurdly satisfying view of seeing a wave of zombies get mowed down, it's just perfect for toilet gaming. Build a row of double peas, or maybe even gatling peas, but make sure you slow them down with ice peas first. Or maybe you're feeling more in the mood to violate the Geneva Convention, kill them with lethal gases, drown them all in your pool. War crimes are a suggestion. I mean, how can you hate this game with its absolutely insane creativity, taking common phrases like pea shooter, making them into literal units, the handwritten zombie notes are iconic, the mini games are amazing. Overall, Plants vs. Zombies is yet another good example of how to do a mobile game. I've played Plants vs. Zombies since I was a kid, and shit, now I play Plants vs. Zombies in real life. Except instead of plants, it's real guns, and instead of zombies, it's the IRS telling me to pay my taxes. You know what, maybe I should... Be a bit more careful with these kind of jokes, man. I mean, I already made a fucking pipe bomb in the previous video. Hopefully I don't get investigated by a three-letter organization for these videos. What the hell do you want with me? I didn't even do anything wrong. Oh yeah? Well, if you didn't do anything wrong... Come on. Jesus, man. Then what the hell is this? Shit, sorry, uh... Wrong, wrong one, wrong one. Um... Then what the hell is this? Okay, listen, man. I can explain, but you gotta believe me. Why'd you make a fucking pipe bomb? You really think you could get away with this? That's crazy. I didn't make a pipe bomb. Those photos were photoshopped. Well, that's very funny, because we actually have the pipe bomb right here. Alright, man. So what? You caught me making a pipe bomb. So what, dude? This is some fucking bullshit. Get me out of here. You better start talking or we're gonna bring out the big guns. We know you're connected to them. We've seen the emails, the 60-second integrated ad scheme, the free champions. We know the whole scheme. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Tell me what you know. I want names. You wanna know 
how I got these free champions, Batman. What the fuck are you talking about, Dagger? My father was a Raid Shadow Legends player. No, don't do it, Dagger. Don't turn this into an ad. Oh, I'm gonna do it, Batman. They can get 50,000 free silver with the link in the description, Bat- Yes. Raid Shadow Legends, the biggest YouTube sponsor of all time. But how good is Raid in actuality? There have apparently been 10 million players for this game and I've seen thousands of ads for it, but I really don't know what the game entails. And in all honesty, it did kind of surpass my expectations. Raid is for all intents and purposes a gacha game. And if you've seen my video game genre tier list, you know how I feel about those. But as with all successful games in that genre, there is actually a somewhat decent game to back it up. So this is effectively an RPG. But where this game shines is the effort put into the individual characters, factions, and lore. I am a massive fan of the Warhammer Fantasy universe, and a lot of the factions in that universe have extremely similar counterparts here. Skinwalkers are really close to Beastmen, there are Skaven, High Elves, Dark Elves, the typical fantasy shit that I love. But let me level with you. This game has two flaws that I have to point out. The first is a personal gripe with modern RPGs, and the second is a more serious issue. My first issue with this game is that the opening levels are so unbelievably easy and boring that it's just tough to motivate even playing through it. Even just using auto battle, it took me so so long to get to a point where playing the game myself had any remote benefit. If I'm playing a video game, I feel I should at a base level, you know, play the video game. My second bigger issue with this game is that it doesn't correctly convey the appeal of it. And I'm talking about the YouTube ads. Most paid advertisements for this game just mention that the characters look cool and that there's a lot of them. And while that is true technically, the main appeal should be focusing on the strategy behind the game at a higher level. That and the gotcha style character pull system, because to me that's what this entire game revolves around. And look, even though it's not for me, there's nothing inherently wrong with the system. People love the randomness of gotcha games, getting LTD characters with their own lore and skill sets. But just be transparent about it. This this game contains quite a bit of virtual gambling, and I'm sure it remains a highly profitable game. I want to be crystal clear, people, especially those who are, you know, working at Raid. Call me. This is a good game. I think it's just marketed backwards. I love you, Raid. Please. I'll tell them whatever you need me to. They don't care. They're, they're not They're not listening to anything I'm saying. This is just, just hit my business email. You know what? Enough of my corporate shilling. Let's talk about another legendary genre of mobile gaming. Tycoons. Tycoons are the goat in my opinion. How can you ever compete with Egg Inc., Idle Miner, or just any of the Papa's games to be honest? This is a genre that was perfected ages ago, and it's aged like a fine wine. But let's do some comparing of the classic Tycoons to some modern ones. Let's start off with the most milk toast tycoon game on the market. Adventure Capitalist. We know it, we love it, you click the button to get money, you buy the upgrades, you buy the managers, so on and so forth. It's extremely simple and yet also distinctly satisfying to watch your empire grow. There are classic tycoon mechanics like prestigious, unlockable separate locations, there's legitimately nothing really to say here. So let's take all of that, an incredible mobile game, and compare it to a modern one. Mental Hospital Tycoon. Yes, this is real. Modern mobile games say fuck it. Let's take mentally ill people and make a whole mobile game about profiting off of them. Uh, I mean, you just can't make this shit up, dude. So this game revolves around building a prison and getting shipments of prisoners that you need to lock up and cure. And if left unhappy, the grippy socks people will try to cause havoc, even going as far to escape. So having a good environment and security becomes very important. But one of the most hilarious twists I think I've ever seen is that you can legitimately go and fight their demons in some kind of a dungeon crawler. I, what is this game? What happened to my papa's pizzeria, to my papa's freezeria? I mean, actually, I don't even know what game they're up to these days. Jeez, there are 17 of these games? Oh my god, dude, what? Papa's Mocheria. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Right, this is just for me, if I'm being honest. But out of all the Papa's games, Freezeria was the most classic to me. This was the one I probably played the most on cool math games and later on on my phone. And what I really like about these games is that they're probably one of the most involved tycoon games on the market, forcing you to basically run an entire restaurant by yourself. This is where I learned what an anxiety attack feels like. But let's look at Papa's Mocheria here. I mean, I'm not expecting much. I mean, for God's sake, Flipline's been re releasing the same game for like 10 years straight with a palette swap. All right, Papa's Mocheria. Just a coffee Papa's game. Let's do the tutorial. So we have different types of espresso and milk with varying quantities and time to roast. Okay, and then once that's done, we need to take it over to a mix station and find the appropriate stuff, siphon it out, add a potential sauce, add toppings, the one thing in a cannoli with different shells, toppings, fillings. And then I mentioned there's an entire cold brew section which has a completely different approach. Okay, what did you do to these games? At this point, dude, you might as well just go work at a fucking cafe. You know what, maybe I just stick with freezery. I think this is too complicated for my little reptile brain. This shit's kind of cooking me, I'm not gonna lie. Other notable tycoons I'm not gonna cover here are Egg Inc. That's it. Egg Inc's a great game, but just another game that I can't really- Oh, add time. Alright, what do we got? <laughs> oh 
Oh yeah, I think this is one of the best eras of advertising of all time. Mafia City, a game known for its incredible gameplay from everybody. Okay, I, I've never actually seen this game or played the game, I, I only know the ads. But if this game is as good as the ads, or fuck, even 10% as good as the ads, this will be absolutely legendary. I'm expecting cool mafia shit, people in suits, Italian accents, cigars, violence. Show me what you got. I can't believe it's you. I've been searching everywhere for you since your brother Rocco passed away. All right, we're off to a good start. We're a part of a mafia family inheriting some serious fucking real estate. Uh, in, in fact, a whole mansion. But what about the gameplay? Because, I mean, that's what we're all here for, right? Well, let's look at some of the ads just to get a feel for what it'll be like. All right, I think I get the picture here. We got some police bribery going on, right? Very mafia. I'm 100% certain that when you join the mafia, you get a card that has boss very poorly printed onto it too. By the way, why why were so many of these ads made? Why is there a, a 35 minute compilation of all of these on YouTube? Did that guy just fucking jump out of a fucking TV like ring? Do any conventional rules apply here or is it just what anyone with enough levels wants to do? But what's the game like? It's just Clash of Clans, but worse. There are more armories, resource farms, rival mafia families, the whole nine yards. But did I say that this game was worse than Clash of Clans? Cause it's not. Cause who is this? There's a full on degenerate romance system in this game and <laughs> wipe away the mirror. I mean, come back, come back, okay. There's a peep timer to keep players engaged. This is, this is brilliant. This, I think this is, this is art at this point. Long gone are the days of competing with friends to keep gamers interested. Just show them this infinite player base. But speaking of Clash of Clans, maybe we talk about that game because I got, uh, I got some hot takes to get off my chest. This might be a little controversial to say, but I'm going to say it. Clash Royale is a much better game than Clash of Clans. Fight me. This game is more competitive. It actually has an esports scene. The game has the same clan mechanics. And on top of that, Clash of Clans takes like, what, six years to complete if you don't pull out the infinite power of mommy's credit card. If a game is 90% waiting for things to finish building, it's uh, not exactly the game for me. But I do respect that this is the go-to game for a majority of people. This game can be as complicated or just absolutely brain dead as you want it to be. Some people have put this game on the big screen and have like a full war meeting, and some people just log in to upgrade some stuff and just let their brain deteriorate. Some people watch full YouTube guides on the best bases, and some people just freestyle it. It's just a very accessible game. But my question is, out of all of the base builders, why play this one? Explain to me why this game is better than Fallout Shelter. A game with cooler weapons, individual characters, trainable stats, survival mechanics. It may lack the multiplayer component, but I think the single player stuff is just so much better. And look, I know I'm for sure in the minority here. I'm being a little contrarian. It's the popular game and I'm the hater. I get it. It's outlandish. I'm just not a huge Clash of Clans guy. In my opinion, it's one of Supercell's weaker games. I like Clash Royale more and I like Brawl Stars more and I will die on that hill. But you know another classic game I played on my phone? Five Nights at Frederick's. No, just kidding. I was actually a coward as a child and seeing this game scared the shit out of me. But I'm I'm an adult now. I played Resident Evil and I've played Silent Hill. I'm a big boy. I can play it now. This is unironically my first ever experience with Five Nights at Freddy's, a game with a ridiculous lore, almost annoyingly so, and then not so deep gameplay. We all know the formula, the night starts and a few robots try to make their way to the room and kill you. Each of them have their own mechanics, patterns, and counters, and it's up to you to keep a cool enough head to conserve power and survive the night. Problem. I don't like it. Jump scares are legitimately my kryptonite. It doesn't matter how predictable it is or how brain dead it is. I get jump scared almost no matter what, meaning I'm just not really fit to play the game. And if you can't do something yourself, you need to get the best next thing. This is 2024 in the era of advanced technology. That's right. I made an AI to play the game for me. Alright, so I trained a full voice model of myself and gave myself the full PNG tuber setup here. Shout out to Photoshop AI for being the worst service on the planet. I mean, what the fuck is this? Now let's name our clone of me here. Um, I think the best way to do this would just be to change the first letter of my name until we find something suitable. Let's see here. Let's go down the alphabet. We got dagger, cagger, bagger, agger. No? Alright, you know what? Maybe we go up the alphabet now. Dagger, eager. Maybe not that one. Get. Yeah. Okay, maybe this isn't the best way to do this. 
Uh, it needs to be cursed, but still understandable. How about Shagger? I think that fits the quality of these videos. All right, power on. Shagger is we fully operational. All right, enemies. we're gonna let him oh, go no, here. So Five Nights at Freddy's can simply be boiled down to checking in on Foxy and using your lights to keep tabs on Chica and Bob. Sorry, this is a bit loud, isn't it? Let me, let me turn it down here. Where's, where's the volume button? Uh, oh God, I'll just I'll turn them off for now. How do I turn it off? It's not turning off. It's not turning off. How do I turn them off? Um, let's just let's out. just leave them here for now. I'll, I'll deal with this later. Royal Match. The only one of these games to legitimately get me with its false marketing. Let's look at this ad, right? It's a mix between sort of an escape room and something like Candy Crush. You're on a huge timer and you need to solve mazes, complete puzzles, all to keep your guy alive. But in actuality, this is another fakey fake bullshit game that's literally just Candy Crush. There's no snake, there's no water, there's no acid. Why are you advertising this without providing me the proper game. Did it get me to click it? Yes. But let me ask you this, right? Let me let me posit a goddamn question. If you scam me into downloading a fake game, what makes you think I'm going to continue to play it or buy anything or do anything remotely profitable for you? Because I won't. And now I'm going to slander your game online. You absolute moron. And while I'm on a rant, I got another one for you. What is Twerk Race? And why is it real? This is the most cursed shit I've ever seen in my life. Who is the target market for this? I can tell you it's not sane people. I can also tell you it isn't women. Nor is it gooners, because this is 2020. And surely you can find something better. My guess is that this is played by kids who went rogue on the app store and couldn't resist downloading it. I can't mentally find anyone else who this would appeal to. And I'm just saying it, that's a little ethically questionable. And we're gonna get even fucking worse. Pregnant dog simulator? Really? This is on the Amazon app store. But get this, I bought the game and I couldn't fucking download it. Amazon quite literally scammed me. So I spent another $5 on a game made by the same people called Pregnant Horse Simulator, and that one worked, so that's what we're playing instead. This game is incredible. What's it about? Uh, I played it for half an hour and I literally have no idea. I rode horse, I collected hay, the horse didn't really seem pregnant, but who cares, right? This is God's country. Cut grass. Uh, that's actually about it. Uh, it's a real shame I couldn't play Pregnant Dog Simulator, though. I was really looking forward to that. I'm never using the Amazon App Store ever again. And look, you know, I've had a lot of complaints in this video, but this is by far the most petty one yet. Let's talk about a scheme that mobile games use to get money off you without you even noticing. This is a concept I call adflation. Let me explain this in terms of a mobile game that I see tons of ads for. Alien Invasion. A weird, stupid game about eating people or something. I don't know. So the idea is to absorb people and then take them back to the base, get currency, buy upgrades, rinse and repeat. But then along comes an ad on the side of the screen. And for watching the ads, I can get three times my current stockpile worth of meat. This took me over five minutes to get, so how can I possibly decline this ad? This is a little technique used by almost every mobile game out there. Make a game with an artificial currency you control the flow of, make people work for it, then offer an absolutely unrefusable deal to make them watch an ad, and thus make the devs more and more money. Does this make a game much lamer when you start to think about it? Yeah does in my opinion. And you could argue that we could just not watch the ads and play the game that way, but you're just kind of misunderstanding human psychology at that point. In my head, I'm literally losing time not watching the ad. This, in my opinion, is just blatantly bad design. If you want to throw voluntary ads my way, make them for something interesting. Access to a ticket for a mini game. Add an extra life to a run. That, at the very least, is somewhat entertaining. And while lame, it is a pretty petty issue. But the biggest problem with mobile games is that they no longer occupy the niche that made them popular. Let's think about why Clash of Clans rose to prominence. It was a game with tons of depths that could run on a phone. Is this the peak of gaming as a whole? Absolutely not. Fast forward to 2024 and look at this. I can efficiently run a PS2 emulator on my phone. In fact, I did a full run of Silent Hill 2 and The Simpsons Hit and Run on the touchscreen. So what need do I have for mobile games? If I can choose to play my favorite game of all time, why would I just choose to play something worse? But not only that, but just check the app store. Slay the Spire on mobile? Total War Medieval? Seriously? These are legendary PC games that just now run on phones. So mobile games recently recently have been forced to step up their game. When I was a kid, all the games that we played during this video were the most popular at the time, and that's what I feel nostalgic for. For kids today though, why would you play Clash of Clans when there's Genshin Impact? When there's something like Roblox? Or literally just PC games that have been ported? Mobile games now more than ever need to evolve to occupy a different niche. But while this has been a negative video as a whole, I think there are a ton of games that actually really surprised me as a step in the right direction. And also really quickly before I get crucified in the comments, I do want to throw out some great mobile games that I just couldn't work into the video. First up is Balloons Tower Defense. 
sense. I still think the best version is BTD Battles. I don't know if that's a hot take or anything. Next up is Pixel Gun 3D, a game that I hardly recognize today, but tried it out recently. The new Battle Royale mode is just kind of fire. Okay, am I missing anything here? Um, no. On to the new mobile games. Ironically, the first of which is a game that uses that whole false ad gimmick I ranted about, Wide Out Survival. A game that, despite the bad rap it gets, is actually really good. If you like RimWorld, I'm almost certain you're gonna like this. The game revolves around building a town in a snowy wasteland, and just like Clash of Clans requires resource farming, upgrading buildings, preparing defenses, and whatnot, but the game just has an atmosphere that totally blew me away. A dynamic soundtrack changing by what you're looking at, the frozen tundra just gives the game a very pretty aesthetic, and the soundtrack is actually kind of good. Not to mention that maintaining temperatures and keeping survivors alive give the game an element of groundedness that I rarely ever get to see in mobile games. The graphics are honestly solid and the game is just clearly well made. However, the game does have some gotcha elements. Random heroes, auto-battling, all the typical horseshit, but everything surrounding the game is actually really good. This is a game that I can legitimately recommend. My only complaints are the auto-battling, that and the lack of individual character skills or attributes, something that you might find in RimWorld or Fallout Shelter. If this game had that kind of stuff, I think it might actually be a contender for the best mobile game out there. The next game I tried that I actually kind of enjoyed was Marvel Snap, another very over-advertised game that just isn't that bad. The whole shtick is that it's a strategy game where both players get to move at the same time. There are three locations played in each game, each having varying effects. Some of them are going to force both players to compete for it, some of them even incentivize players to completely ignore it. At the round start, you have an amount of energy that you can spend. This determines what kind of cards you can play. Some cards require one, two, three, so on and so forth. While it sounds kind of complicated, it's it's actually pretty simple and approachable. This is just overall a fun strategy game that I think has the potential to reach Clash Royale levels of competitive quality. But during the making of this video, I tried 15 different new mobile games, and unfortunately, these are the only two that I thought were even somewhat decent. And that gets me back to the topic of this video. New mobile games are significantly worse than they were even seven years ago. And to be honest, I don't really know what the future of the genre holds. But that's gonna be about it for this video. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, right. Shagger. Should probably go turn him off. He's been running on his own for a while. A day for timid souls. This is a day of reckoning. A day to unleash the thunderous roar of God's... Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching this absolute dog shit. This video has been very fun to produce. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Isaiah for helping me film everything here, including the White Trash podcast, which leads me to a very big announcement. I have a Patreon or a coffee. I haven't decided yet, actually. But there are a few reasons for starting one of these. Firstly, these are getting kind of expensive to make. And in the very near future, I'm expecting to have to buy a new camera, get a bunch of new equipment. But now I can say that there's officially enough content to justify a Patreon-like service. Right now, we have full episodes of the White Trash podcast on the Patreon fully edited and everything. And now in the future for upcoming projects, I'm going to allow you to vote on my next videos. And we'll do the classic Patreon name scroll at the end of the video. And it's not exactly up at the moment, but I will be doing a Discord server. But I just want to make it super obvious that this isn't required. But for those who want to personally support me in the channel and help me upgrade all of my equipment and sort of finance these videos and also get a bunch of content, this is for you. So please just give it a look for me. Next up, I want to rant about a war I've been having against a group of fucking fireflies. I actually tweeted about this recently, but I'm so unbelievably fired up about this that I just kind of have to rant. There have been a somewhat large group of fireflies who managed to get into my room at night, and I don't know how legitimately, but the second it's bedtime, these things come out and just start effectively flashbanging me. Uh, I'm very sleep deprived as a result of this, and there's nothing I can do. I've gotten up and tried to hunt them, but the second I turn on the lights, they scatter. But if I try to hunt them with the lights off, I just end up tripping over shit. It's, it's just hell. If purgatory exists, it's trying to sleep with a collection of fucking flying lamps in your room. But enough about that. This video has been long enough. Subscribe or something. I don't know. Thank you all so much for watching. Comment Firefly if you made it this far. Um, I'm tired of talking now. Bye.